All right, guys. Welcome to podcast number 20. And uh, this one is called, uh, I just kind of labeled it, an extra half hour. So Andy and I are going to dive into if you had an extra half hour or even more, half hour to two hours a day to spend on fitness related things, um, what are some cool ways that you could use that time? So it could be if you have a vacation, um, you know, your schedule changes, you have a little one who starts school and you all of a sudden find yourself with a little extra time. Um, so yeah, we're just going to kind of dive into that and, you know, first and foremost, if, if you're only training one to three days a week, uh, that time's probably going to be best spent just getting some sort of a workout and extra training stimulus in. Um, but if you've already filled up that cup, you work out, you know, three to six days a week, you're getting in good training sessions on a regular basis. Um, one thing you can do just if you find yourself like, hey, I can get to the gym 15 minutes early or stay 15 minutes after, great thing to do is use this time to get some extra skill work in. So stuff that's not necessarily gonna beat you up, make you tired um, for things outside of the gym, but things like gymnastic skills, so progressions under a low high heart rate. So, you know, things like a, a rope climb foothold, um, working on your kip, your hollow body positions, maybe working some strict pull-ups or dips, um, double unders. I, I think I've had this conversation with a lot of people um, lately. We've had a few double under workouts. They're starting to pop up more and more because the running is going to stop soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm can't, talking to you people. You can't row and bike all the time. No. So, yeah, I'm starting to talk to people about, hey, they're like, yeah, I just can't get these double unders figured out. And I'm like, the way to get those is, is practice. So it's, it's working just for about two or three minutes a day for, you know, an extended period of time. And they, they pop up right away. Working on them for a half hour uh, once every six weeks you're never going to get them that way. So it's, it's just touching, touching, touching. So that's a great way I think to, uh, to maybe start thinking about, um, you know, spending some of that and extra that's time. Not like a hundred pull-ups. Yes. Like I, I worked on my pull-ups. I did 150 yesterday. Like that's a workout. That's not working on a skill. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And then, you know, 10, 20. Yeah. A few. Yeah. Just touching, greasing yeah. the groove, you know, that's what builds those skills that last. You know, you're building a skill, you're burning a pattern into your body, not just developing a bunch of capacity, you know, short term. That's not working on a skill. Yes. And then uh, another thing, you know, just getting some extra training volume. Um, a good example is like, you know, Mike Gold, um, a member at our gym, uh, switched jobs. And it's less of a nine to five and it's a sales job. So sometimes he has a week where he's not working a lot. He's not traveling a lot. And then, so he uses that extra time when he's not working a lot and uh, not traveling to add extra training volume. Um, this is great if you're planning to compete in something like the open, um, a competition. Well, he did a half marathon and then fall jam and has a competition this week. And is doing the open. Yeah. And doing really well, too. So, yeah. And all of them. Yeah, he did the half marathon. Just a different way to spend your extra time. Yeah, he's crushing it. So, and, and he's doing it in a good way. He's healthy. He's feeling really good. Um, but he has that extra time to devote. What this podcast isn't going to really be about is like, hey, how, if you have an extra two hours a day, how to get you to the CrossFit Games. That's not what we're it's really talking about. Necessarily, you need to add more. Yeah. But you can, and, and Mike is a phenomenal example of that. He's kicking ass right now. Um, you don't need more, but if you want more. Yeah, yeah, and you can do some cool things with that, oh, yeah. like a half marathon, the open, and a CrossFit competition. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another thing, um, and something that I really do, um, this is this is an area where I'm starting to work with that extra time around maybe the wad, is uh, some accessory exercises. So I'll do... Um, some PT like activation, um, say it's a squat day, you'll see me with like the hip bands. We'll do a lot of that stuff in our warm ups. Um, strengthening weak areas on the body, like rotator cuff work with like the crossover symmetry. I'll, I like to do that before and after workouts. Um, 
or things like hypertrophy work. So, you know, getting some dumbbells out, hitting some dumbbell benches and curls. And you've been doing a lot of this with uh, level two, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it's like I'm, an accessory after the workouts. It's my tricky way of adding volume. Without so, beating the crap out so of So we everybody. don't start the clock. We don't set weights. You just do the movements. Yeah. It's I mean, really. It's a way to add working out without really going crazy. Yeah, it really <laughs> seems like it's paying off, too. And like, nobody's hurt. Yeah, guys, everyone's healthy in that class, and, like, they look great. Like Doing good in the open. Yep. I love that stuff that you're doing with everybody in there. Um, another way. But those people have that extra time, so that's how they spend it. Yeah, yeah. It's That's not all done in an hour. No, no, no. You get the class done in an hour, and that accessory mm -hmm. that you have afterwards. Is the extra. This, that's this whole thing. It's mm -hmm. the extra. It's, and you do a really good job of planning that in. And we don't do that so much with the all-level class because a lot of us, you know, we don't have that extra hour. So we're talking about that hypothetical extra mm -hmm. half hour to an hour. Um, you know, another thing is mobility and stretching. So, you know, if I have some extra time at the end of classes, I love to run my classes through stretches. And it's something that I like to do to put that in their head because when we run that full hour right up until the end, we're running a class right behind it. We don't have time for that. So mobility and stretching is huge, especially in what we're doing in CrossFit. Things like overhead squats, um, even getting like a skill like a bar muscle up. A lot of this has to do with being able to actually get into these positions, squatting the right way. So hitting some extra mobility work 10 to 15 minutes before class can help you get into those positions, or if you do them consistently, permanently change your mobility so you might not even have to do that extra 15 minutes of work. Um, you know, things like overhead squats where you can just basically warm up and get right into There's it. There's apps that do all of that too, which I think go wide, you can select 15 minutes or 22 minutes or however long you want to stretch and it just does it for you. Oh, cool. You don't think at all. Does it have like primary movements or anything? You test do? yourself and it does it all for you. Oh, wow. But there's apps out there that tell you exactly what to do and how much time you're gonna take. Like, I think, um, what is the big, <laughs> what is the big stretching one? Mo uh, Ramwad. Ramwad, there yeah. it is, yeah, that's the same damn thing. Yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I've gotten to rhythm where I've done that a lot. But if you, you know? don't know what to do and want stuff, like that stuff tells you exactly what to do. Yeah. It's all out there. And it's they're generally not super expensive, you know. No, no, and that's usually just what people want like what should I do to stretch and like it's that stuff just curtails straight to you. Yeah. That was something that I I always actually But those things are great. With individual like design type <clears throat> clients, I'll always be like, "Hey, try and hit this every day." Like that can really go a long way if you're spending that extra 15 minutes in doing it. Um, but there's resources, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Yeah, Ramwad's a good one. I, I, that's one that I have used. The other one, I need to check that out. That's pretty cool. Um, so another thing, post-workout is a great time to actually stretch because then you're really warmed up and you can get into positions that you're not actually going to get to when you're kind of cold walking into the gym. So that's a great way to like now like get into some range of motion that you definitely couldn't get into like – when you come into the gym and you're cold. So I, I think that's a great time to uh, to stretch, to gain some permanent range of motion too with, uh, with the stretching because you're stretching more muscles. Um, and then taking a, a, a studio yoga class, I, I always talk about like, you know, I need to do that once a week. And I've actually been pretty good about doing once – a week probably for the last two months or so and uh i always feel better when i do it i know uh, kenny does a lot right now yeah he has that extra half hour he's got a couple half hours yeah <laughs> yeah so he's in between jobs he's got right some now. time he's crushing it in the best shape of his life but <laughs> yeah. yeah he's doing uh yoga classes in between like two a days mm -hmm. in the gym oh, yeah yeah, it's great. Where, where I have really noticed it help is uh, you can get into positions um, better on Olympic lifts because your ankles start to get more mobile. Doing, You're just doing not worried road. about getting into a position. Yeah, you just can get into them. Your body can flow you into don't those think positions. About it. And you're flowing and you're like you're doing almost like recovery work. Like if you're sore from squatting or, 
you know, your shoulders are sore. You're, you're getting blood to flush through those muscles, but you're not really uh, taxing those muscles in a way where you're tearing them down too much. Um, so yoga classes, I think, I don't love them so much for like a workout when you're intended to get like a workout out of the class, like a training stimulus out of it. I don't, I don't really, I don't know. That's a whole nother <laughs> thing to dive into. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but not to say you can't get that. You, you certainly can. I've been to yoga classes where I did like a thousand dive bomber push-ups, and I'm like, yeah, your shoulders are going to be lit from this. I don't. I don't personally like to use yoga for that purpose. Um, but improving range of motion and act and connecting your body. So, like one leg balances and things like that. Like I've seen a ton of benefit. Like areas that I'm like muscles that somehow aren't getting worked through the movements we typically work at CrossFit, I'm like, oh, wow, I'm shaky in this position. And then after a while, it, it gets better. And then when I go back to CrossFit, I feel a little better on uh, different moves. So I think a, a studio yoga class is, is a great way to spend an extra hour if you have it a week. Um, this is one I've seen you working on. The next one I kind of had written down um, over the last year or two, and you've really improved, you know, a lot i've just seen doing steady state cardio work like scott yesterday rode the bike for 30 minutes yeah just sat there and rode the bike for 30 minutes and just chilled out this is this is an area i think in my personal training that's lacking a lot right now um the hard part is just not pacing <laughs> yeah. just sitting down and like all right just go yeah that's actual reactive recovery, not the people that are like, oh, I'm going to go run five miles really fast or, or like run really far and fast. Like Set it's just, up like an aggressive email. It's an extremely low impact. It's a machine, and it's just go for a long time. Yeah. and, and what Nathan I, used to always do that too, like 40-minute ski sessions out in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that stuff's so <laughs> beneficial. Like the low-intensity stuff on like a rower or an indoor bike or going for a bike ride outside mm -hmm. or like a hike in the woods. Um I read, I was reading about it that building up like your aerobic capacity actually really helps you recover within like high intensity mm -hmm. work. And it makes sense. Like if you can, you know, run 10 miles well, or your body's set up for that within the context of that workout, like they said, having that aerobic capacity is where like 80% of your recovery comes from like so like workouts. nathan we had a bike workout where we rode for like 20 or we rode the bike for 25 minutes with different rate changes um you had to hold a minute at a slow pace and then do something and hold another minute slow pace the big guys did they went 100 and whatever rpms or whatever and then their slow pace was what 35 rpms and they just took their hands off the bike nathan held 60 rpms for his slow pace so therefore his aerobic capacity his recovery pace is 60 rpms while everyone else is 35 so like wow. that's the kind of the idea like how slow but how how fast but slow can you go so like your slog is but he's pretty re up tempo. He's recovering yeah. at 60 RPMs while everyone that just really blew it out is recovering at 35. Yeah. So he's yeah. teaching his body how to re fully recover while working. Yeah. He's not totally. So just it's things like that. And, it's yep. not looking at like you got to go as fast as you can. It's like what's the <clears throat> slowest, fastest pace I can hold. I noticed that whole um, for me in. Uh, mm. You know, I, I wasn't training specifically for the open, but that first open workout kicked me in the nuts. Um, about It was the worst open workout I've ever had. Uh, just completely kicked me in the balls um, because I've just kind of more <laughs> of my training's been like anaerobic and uh, I came out kind of hot and then I just like, I can't, I couldn't keep like a, I wasn't recovering within the context of the workout. And I'm like, and I've been in better burpee shape and all that. I'm like, that, it was just weird. I'm like, okay, when I was kind of writing this all out, I'm like, that is a gap and a hole if I have an extra half hour a week, like a day like today where I don't typically train on Thursdays, I should probably jump on a bike. 20, or, 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, and start moving my body, and that's going to transfer really well, I think, or into this. Two Fridays training. ago, I was home. I did three rounds of a 1K row, 1K ski. Yep. It was just really long. It was about 24 minutes. It was back and forth. Yeah. It's nice and slow. Yeah, stuff like that is, is great, and I think it's it's 
the one area I don't see people working on it or if they do they're doing it to like maybe try and lose weight yeah, or you know it's not yeah. the intention isn't really there in the in the right way yeah so. yeah because yeah. um, those people never also go fast so yeah most people that need that are always going fast uh, so they need to slow down yeah but if you're always going slow you need to go faster yeah they, they like to hang out in that stimulus yeah. they're more of just volume junkies yeah um Another thing that I've I've started to do the last couple years, and when I'm actually um, doing it, it, it I see a huge benefit um, is like daily mindfulness exercises. So I like have some like meditations on my phone, um, even going for like short walks. So again, this is for like I think it for people who go really fast all the time. People who are like that, they also, I think, um, at least in my case, like I'll get anxiety, I think, from like, I'm like doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm working out really hard. And it's just like, you need to slow <laughs> down once a day or, you know, at some point. And uh, so I've been actually doing this at like bedtime. So throwing a meditation on some headphones helps me kind of mellow out and then sleep. Um, Going on a short walk during the day, like maybe at lunchtime, I think that can help with like digestion, helps you think, and then you can break up your work day too Just that way. Get away from your phone. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just That's the phones so are so much anger out there. Yeah. <laughs> Just get off. I agree. Shut with it that. off for a second. That's a that's a good point, Andy. Yeah, get away. Leave the phone on the desk. Instagram just walk. hate, hate, hate. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. It is. I agree, man. Um, I think, and then the, the last one I have is uh, sleep. So, you know, I'm going to try not to go on a huge tangent here, but, um, and I've talked about this in other podcasts. If you have an extra 30 minutes a day to devote to fitness, and if you're someone who's training regularly um, and you're not sleeping enough, extra training stimulus, even like dialing in your diet won't help you as much as probably getting an extra half hour of sleep a day. And I think you and I, you know, being newer dads here, you know, you figure out how important that sleep is, um, especially when you lose some of it and how you feel and when you're And you recovering. realize it's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you get that extra half hour. Let that go. Absolutely. But if you can get that extra sleep and you can prioritize it, like there's so many benefits to it. Um, you're going to recover way better in the workouts. You're going to be healthier. Um, you wake gonna, up hungry. Yeah. There's nothing better than waking up hungry. You'll have better body composition. Um, speaking of phones, this thing won't stop. Um, won't wake up hazy. Yeah. You'll be sharp. You'll your day uh, extra half hour. Will, you'll get two more hours of productivity in your day. Um, for me, I remember it's probably the most profound shift I've ever had in my fitness was um, I really started prioritizing my sleep, and I probably started on average getting an extra like hour maybe even 90 minutes some nights and this was probably around like 27 years old so i was in my prime too um i made that shift i'm like i'm not gonna stay up till one in the morning like screwing around on youtube and I'm like i'm gonna sleep and i'm gonna get up at the same time every day and i remember doing that and like it was like lifts just started sky everything like got so much better it was the biggest shift i've ever seen in my like training um so this is the hardest it's it's the one that's the easiest to say it's not like a like a go sexy sleep one. more yeah go sleep more oh, okay like, it's hard to execute on that a lot of us have ang yeah anxiety around bed and there's like a lot of stuff going on or my biggest thing is i always thought and still do feel like this like if you pack your day in and you've got a bunch of stuff that you've got going on and you get home Maybe you get your kids to bed or, or whatever it is. Like you want to sort of entertain yourself. Like I don't feel like I've entertained myself in any way. I want to watch a movie or get on Netflix. And uh, 
you never miss that like once you wake up like man i'm really glad i watched that yeah. show last night but you're really pissed that you stayed up till 2 30 in the looking, morning looking at cats with hats or something on instagram <laughs> yeah going down some bullshit rabbit hole yeah. like this. it's like and i that's what i do that every night i just start going down internet rabbit holes and like and when i cut that stuff out which i have pretty much entirely done that um it made a, an amazing uh, shift in my fitness. Um, I used to take melatonin right when I got home. Oh, so we'd right get away. home at like nine o'clock and just take it, and then by ten you're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Because people take it and then lay in bed. It's, you gotta wait. Yep. Let yep. it work. It but needs melatonin's, like a, melatonin's the greatest thing ever. I take it every night. You just gotta yeah, just wake up, get up. So I always make fun of it, but I started it again, and it in combination with melatonin, uh, CBD oil. So I got some from the place in uh, Clintonville, like the high, high potency mm-hmm. kind. It's like a hundred milligrams of it, and uh, like it's the good stuff. That and melatonin mixed. I mean, I'm out like a light. It's just you, when you get up, you got to get up. <laughs> that yep. stuff will hold you in bed. Yeah, <laughs> it will absolutely. hold you there. Get up. Absolutely. Put your feet on the floor and go. You're Once fine. you get up, you're good to go. Yeah, you, you yeah. got to just go because <laughs> if you stay there, you're down. Yeah, you can sit in bed for 10 oh. hours. Oh. Once you wake up, go though. Just go. Yeah. So, get some sleep, try, you know, maybe try a little melatonin, a little of that CBD oil if you have some anxiety around bed it's and that can... overlooked supplement out there. Yeah. It does it. It works. It just puts you to sleep, keeps you there. Mm-hmm. Sleepy time tea. I need you, to. You used to do sleepy time tea, but then you got to pee in the middle of the night, so it really kind of ruin, ruins that. all that. Yeah. You're tired and groggy and trying to pee. <laughs> um, the last one I had here is another one that it's like sleep, but it's uh, sunlight, just getting sunlight. Um, vitamin D? Yeah, vitamin D. Um, I think there's like there's a lot of studies and – you know, I'm not going to dive again super deep into it because I don't have any numbers in front of me. But I've seen it, it's like the super high percentage of people, especially in places like Ohio. Get what line north of whatever line are deficient. D, yeah. yeah, are deficient. Especially now because we're going indoors. Yep, and it's and that's a super important vitamin that's only produced by sunlight unless you're supplementing it. Um, that helps with like testosterone production and just seasonal depression. Yeah, sleep. It actually affects if you're not getting it, like you don't sleep as well. Like think about if you're on like a beach vacation, like you hit the bed, like you hit your bed and you're just out like a light, you know, like if you've been getting a lot of sunlight, like you sleep better. Um, train Like when you're training outdoors in the, the summertime, you can almost see like, you know, when we have our training videos just kind of running at the gym, like you see people in the winter and you see them in the summer the bodies look different in the summer outside, like engaging on weights, running around the building, like people are tan, like there's, there's something about training outdoors that I think from like a mental standpoint, a hormonal standpoint, everything just skyrockets when you're doing more activity outside, not been, you're not like locked in, uh, you know, in a gym the whole time and and kind of going back to that um that big profound change when i like started getting sleep like not too long after that i had a summer and this is kind of pre-kids single all i was doing was like i like to work out and i was first getting into crossfit but i had a split shift in the day um like I'd do morning and then evening and I had like five hours in the middle of the day and I lived in an apartment complex at a pool and I'd go lay out and I'd fall asleep there every day for like an hour outside. And again, that was like some of the best I think I've ever felt in my life. I was just like getting sun every day, working out once or twice a day, um, getting a lot of sleep, just feeling really good. So I think that extra 30 minutes to an hour, if you have that, Um, you don't have to just use it for training. Like you can just get outside and get some sunlight, go on a walk, uh, lay by a pool, uh, or preferably an ocean if you buy one. (laughs) Um, 
So yes, I'm like, have you ever known, I mean, you've lived in like some warmer places, like when you were deployed, it's probably hard to remember because you weren't maybe training the way you are now, but. Ooh, I was trained more. It was just different. Yeah. Cause yeah, when I was deployed, we, I would go swim every day and then go rock and then run. It was just, that was just volume, volume, volume. So it was uh, different. It wasn't as intense, but yep. it's hard to compare. Yeah. Yeah. In Florida, when I lived in Florida, it was the same way. That's when I started doing two a days. Do you I mean, feel good just, being out there, like, by the ocean? And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Living on the ocean. I mean, yeah. Paddle boarding and having a boat every day. Yep. But I was, I don't know, it's hard to compare. Because yeah. I'm 15 living here. I mean, it was just different. Yeah. We worked out harder. Yeah. Different goal. Yeah. But yeah. we're outside. Like, when you're outside, I think it really Oh, works. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which we're coming into Until a... Until it's too hot. Well, yeah. And we, we're coming into a part of the year where... Unless you, uh, you've got, you know, the money and the means to uh, travel, you're, you're going to be a, stuck inside. Get a, a little spot bit. by the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I hope I hope just listening through that, like some, like there was like a little light bulb, like oh yeah, that would be cool, or I've done that and I remember that help. Or like one stretching, like I stretch, like sitting with Cole on the floor, like I'm actually stretching a lot. That I know once he starts moving, I'm gonna have to move. So yeah, I watch TV sitting on the floor. Yeah, that's and awesome. I do weird pigeon and all kinds of things on the floor. I don't sit, on, try not to sit on the couch and watch TV. That's a good idea. So that's just my 20 minutes that I get. It's just easy. Like instead of sitting on the couch, sit on the floor. Yeah, sit with your legs crossed. With stupid stuff like that. That's a great idea. I need to do that. But yeah, I just try not to get get off the couch. Yeah. So, if you guys have any, also, if you guys want us to speak on a certain topic too, we're always open to ideas. Um, I thought this was a fun one. If you guys have any like viewer questions, you can put a comment on our YouTube video. Um, you can also email me, Brandon at CrossFitGrandview.com. I'm always looking for cool things to talk about, and I'd love for the topic to come from you guys so we can essentially just answer your question in a podcast. Um, I'll, I'll kind of dive into – we have some announcements just at the gym coming up. Um, so right now we're in week four. We're uh, laying this down on Thursday. Uh, so the open workout will come out tonight. The podcast will probably get distributed in the next couple days. Um, and then the final week will be coming up. So we'll be wrapping everything up next week. Um, if you're a team captain, make sure you're getting your scores in. I have everything updated through week three right now. Uh, Saturday, November 9th is a noon game for Ohio State, which, again, locks up all our parking. We'll have a 7 a.m. class only at CrossFit Grandview. And then we'll have free barbell classes for all members. Uh, so Power Hour and Rev are open to everybody that day. Um, we also have Hot for the Holidays going on right now. And I do believe we're going to extend the entries through next week. So you can sign up right there at the Athletes Corner. You can also send an email in and we can just write your name down. But uh, if you're not familiar with that contest, you take a before and after picture uh, right when you sign up, send it into longsingerkate at gmail.com. And then at the end, we essentially just split all the prize money right down the middle and then uh, to the winners. And we've had up to a thousand plus uh, dollars for the winners. So this is a big, uh, a big one if you want to win some prize money, basically pay for your membership for a year. Um, and then coming up, something to mark on your calendars. We're going to use it as the end of the open party, but it's really going to probably be one of our biggest events we've ever had is our holiday party this year. Uh, it's our 10 year anniversary. So we'll be 10 years in business, December 1st. Um, it'll be December 13th at the view from six to 10 PM. You can bring a friend or a guest. Um, I'm also going to invite, you know, members who were with us, who aren't members anymore for you know five plus years and uh invite them to come back so you'll probably see some old faces there maybe you haven't seen in a little while um i'm super pumped up for this one it's going to be a big one we actually got it we kicked everything back an hour later because we keep doing it from like five to nine this time we're going to be able to stay a little bit later um i know i'm getting a hotel that night so <laughs> 
10 I'll year, be able to go out after the, the, the last, 10 years big yeah. in CrossFit. Yeah. <clears throat> so please. Hopefully HQ makes it out and they're busy. They're going to be busy this year if they're doing that. I know. I, I should have, like, I need to, I'm going to send an email over to them and just, like, let them know, like, hey, Good if luck. you guys want to come. Good luck. Astro came out to this. Or it wouldn't, because I'd be like, I have something to say. <laughs> like, I've been wanting to talk to you. <laughs> just be on their yeah. shoulder. Hey, hey. Drinking a beer. You didn't need it? Yeah. <laughs> so, about this. What the Pointing heck? at your yeah, phone what the bunch. heck, man? <laughs> Are you going to bring back regionals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we could do that. That'll be awesome. But, guys, yeah, we have a DJ open bar. Uh, Cameron Mitchell is catering this one this year. The food's always good. Mm -hmm. We've always had good catering, but this is, like, going to be the real deal. So we essentially throw a wedding minus the wedding. Um, It's going to be awesome this year. So looking forward to that. Um, Podcast 20. Um, See you guys next time.